That is insane, isn't it? So it's beautiful. I hope you all had a, uh, a wonderful last afternoon and evening inside of Exeter. We're going to go into Cornwall now and I'm going to take you to all the beautiful coastal harbour villages. Today we've made it to Cornwall. We drove for about an hour and a half from Devon and we've just arrived in a place called Boss Castle, which has no <laughs> castle. <laughs> which has no castle. We were like, oh, the Quarter Castle Boss? That's Boss, that's, really, that's the, what a dope name for a castle. So Cornwall has got, I think, the most stories that we've pulled together already about a place, even before we've arrived there. I know, along There's, the journey we learnt so oh man. many cool facts about this place. Okay, so probably the biggest thing off the bat is that Cornwall, like their independence site, in summary, they yeah. want to be, uh, I don't know if it still is the case, but they, they wanted or want to be pretty much their own country. They want their own independence, right? They like to be different. They've got their own flag. Um, and what they else? do things differently here, like the cream tea that we had in the last vlog. We put the cream on first and then the jam, but here they do it differently. They put the jam on first, do it the other way. and then you put the cream on top. So we might actually go and have some more cream tea, I think. Also another thing that they're famous for food-wise is their... Uh, the Cornish pasty. Cornish pasty. Apparently the Cornish ice cream is amazing, so there's all this food that we want to try. But we're here for a couple of days, so we'll space those out. Uh, what was the other thing? So. Uh, another thing about their independence, at one stage they had their own tax. They were completely separate from yeah. from the rest of the country. Then it started causing troubles because they actually started, this is going back quite some time, this is the history of the place. Then they started taxing their own people to try and fund a war because <laughs> King Henry the Eighth was worried about an invasion from the Pope. It's like, man, there is just so <laughs> much. A lot going on. There's so much going on here. But I think we should go and explore Boss Castle first before we go deep into all these other random stories that we've got. This place is ridiculously beautiful. It's absolutely stunning here. It's got all this black, black rock and everything. Big hills. Well, hills. Excuse me, you're talking through my Instagram. Oh, I'm so sorry. Sorry, we we're crossing over here. So we've got that water, that ocean coming right the way through in here. There's all these little walks and paths that you can take. Apparently, uh, Boss Castle has had quite a few flash floods because the water can come right in here flood right the way down and then that's pretty much town that's where we just walked down and around here it's a bit of a dangerous spot but she's a stun all right that we're doing this the correct way today because we're in a new place. Don't want to get into trouble. We don't want to get into any trouble, no. So today we're putting the jam on first and then the cream. It's very hard to put the cream on top. Mm. Like, it doesn't spread properly. I don't know if I'm a fan of doing it this way. I know that's controversial. Um, so now we are going to spend our hours almost up here. So uh, we're going to eat these scones and then get back on the road. 
So we've just driven around uh, around the bay, really, isn't it? Just around it sort of. Very close, yeah. Only about a five minute drive to a little island town called Tintagel, I think that's how you say it. Tintagel. Tintagel. So a couple of really interesting stories that I picked up then. Um, hit us with these stories. Hit us with them. Okay, so the first one was <laughs> um, going to church, which is what we've come to see, uh, used to be compulsory. And if you didn't go to church, you were accused of witchery. But, witchcraft and, w- and Witchcraft and wizardry or whatever it was. <laughs> so, so what they would do is they would tie your hands up, put rocks in your pocket, and throw you into the ocean. Throw you into a, yeah, throw you into a lake and see if you drown. And if you drown, <laughs> you are innocent. If you drown, great. Congratulations. We're so happy that person was innocent. And if you came back out, then you were obviously a witch or some again. Would you say they, they would um, and then burn they would you at the burn stake? Burn you at the stake, yeah. So win-win, really. Win-win. <laughs> Another really interesting one. Um, the saying, stinking rich. So a lot of the burial grounds were on top of each other. They would bury like multiple people deep. The rich people wouldn't want to be on the bottom, so they would pay to be on the top, except for the tombs and the, um, the structures that they were in. Over time, the ground was uneven and would start to crack and sort of break away. So that would mean that some of the stench would come out. And because the rich people are on the top, stinking rich. Stinking rich. I love learning these, all this knowledge. <laughs> so crazy, <laughs> so weird and so crazy. to see. That is insane, isn't it? It's so beautiful. um... Wow. What a view. This just reminds us of Broadchurch. That's like like our connection to... Yeah. All those steps that you see to the right, round up and round to the top. And uh, basically, it's just the foundations of an old medi- medieval castle. So we know there was a castle, but we don't know exactly why and what it was for. But it's obviously been connected to King Arthur and his involvement here. Problem is, there's 13 other places as well that also have connections to King Arthur. It's all myth and legend stuff now, you know? The views out here are just absolutely insane. We knew that we were. We were told that Cornwall and sort of the coast of England was going to be beautiful, but... I, I wasn't expecting that colour of water here. I, I wasn't prepared for what we've just seen. And also, it's not very cold here. Like, you think the coast no. is like windy and rugged and freezing yeah. cold, but it's like a nice temperature. It's not very... it's very calm. Yeah, apparently Cornwall, for some reason, has its sort of own little... I don't know if you want to call it a microclimate, but it's warmer here than most places. Sadly, it's looking tell like. You why. Sadly, it looks like it's going to be really, really average and rainy tomorrow, which is the traditional England we were expecting, I think. We're now at St. Ives. This is actually one of the, um, what did you say? One of the most popular tourist yeah, yeah. destinations. And you, can, you can already see why it's so charming. The main thing that we have to do, have to do, like this is the stop to do it. I'm so hungry. You know what I'm talking about already, don't oh, you? I know what you're talking about. <laughs> We're talking about Cornish pasties. And we have been holding off yeah. to try these. And we've got a cool story about it. And it's like another quintessential meal do. that we have to try. 